Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith. I'm a registered EEG technologist. What that is, is I place wires on the patient's scalp and record their brain activity for the doctors, primarily for people who have seizure disorders. So Rett syndrome, I had to look it up. Guys, I honestly don't have all these syndromes uh, memorized. I have this thing called Google, or I could just ask, ask Siri, my little assistant here, what is Rett syndrome? Well, I looked it up and it's a de developmental disorder where it only happens in girls. And during the first six months, the babies are gonna be relatively normal. And then after that is when things can start going downhill and the baby is gonna start losing like uh, motor functions. They're not gonna be able to use their hand. They're not gonna be as coordinated as normal kids. It's sad, it's a very rare uh, genetic uh, disorder, Rett syndrome. And so, and originally the doctor ordered a routine 30 minute EEG and I hooked it up. And what I saw in the EEG was just to describe it to you guys, EEG just looks like a bunch of squiggly lines, but these squiggly lines mean something. It's a, it's a different language that you gotta learn and it just takes time to learn it. So what I saw in the EEG was pretty much a bad brain. Um, so what I saw was sharp activity, which was about two hertz, so about two times per second, you're gonna see very high amplitude, sharp waves, and also periods of suppression where it's just kind of like flat. So it'd be like flat for a little bit, and then it'd be like really high amplitude, sharp waves. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it, it was like spikes because spikes are less than um, 70 milliseconds. It, it would be correctly defined as a sharp wave, which is between 70 and 200 milliseconds. So high amplitude sharps about two hertz, so two times per second, and they're generalized throughout the whole brain. And this was pretty much just her baseline EEG. So at the end of the day, you know, I sent the doctor a text, let him know what I saw, the uh, the sharp waves. I didn't see any seizures. It was just her her baseline brain activity was just bad in general. So I notified the doctor. Then uh, I didn't get any text back or anything. And then the next day in the morning, I saw an order for a long-term EEG. And then I looked on the name, I was like, hmm. This looks very familiar. This was the same girl I did yesterday. Wow. So I actually was able to go put the wires back on the patients and we use these things called, this thing called uh, collodion glue, which glues down the electrodes so they can stay on for more than 24 hours. So you, just, you dip uh, little pieces of gauze in the collodion and you put the collodion on top of the wire and then you use the air hose to dry the little collodion glue so the wires stick on the patient's head. So that's what you do for long-term EEG. So yep, I hooked it back up. Uh, the brain was looking the same, uh, not very good. Uh, it looks very different compared to a normal person's brain, compared to her brain. It's just, she's just got a case of the bad brain, guys. Now, <clears throat> later in the day, while she was on monitoring, we actually captured a seizure. So I was like, hmm, so what, what, is, what should her seizures look like? I was intrigued by this. Uh, so my friend Morgan, she was showing me the patient's seizure. You'd call it a tonic seizure. Now tonic means stiffening, pretty much stiffening of the muscles. So with tonic seizures, you're gonna see a lot of muscle artifact. Um, but a lot of you are familiar, if you're an EEG, you're, you're familiar with generalized tonic clonic seizure so tonic is the stiffening phase and then clonic is the is the shaking phase so this one was just tonic there was no clonic phase it was just the tonic stiffening phase of the seizure now during the seizure since her baseline brain activity is showing sharp waves pretty much the whole time with periods of just almost flat suppression um the seizure was actually very interesting. I feel like I could have missed this seizure if I was monitoring for 12 hours and I, and I wasn't paying attention like 100%. I definitely could have missed it because uh, the tonic seizure just looked like a bunch of muscle artifact. And then I seen some, some rhythmic faster beta activity. So maybe like 15 Hertz, 15 waves per second about. And it was very rhythmic. like. It, it was very rhythmic beta activity. So I was one, but it looked like mostly just the muscle activity, but near the end, I could I could see it more and be like, yeah, yeah, that looks like seizure to me. So I was wondering if, 
if I got rid of the muscle ac activity, if I filtered out the muscle artifact, what would it look like underneath in the tonic phase of a seizure? That's an interesting question. Uh, I don't have a bunch of tonic seizures on hand to load into my EEG software, so I, maybe I'll figure it out eventually. Maybe you guys could tell me. So what, is it just rhythmic beta activity in the tonic phase of a tonic clonic seizure? So in this patient's case with the Rett syndrome, they just had the tonic phase and then that was it. And then it went back to the baseline of the, uh, the two hertz generalized sharp waves. There was no, there was no crazy like spike and wave stuff that you see usually in the clonic phase, the, the phase where, you know, you got the shaking of the limbs. It was really just the stiffening phase, the tonic phase. So if you're a student, you gotta remember these two things, tonic, stiffening, clonic, shaking, tonic, clonic. Those are two weird words, but tonic, I think of as like muscle tone, like very toned, stiffening, I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe there's an easier way to remember it, but tonic means stiffening and clonic means shaking. And in this case, it was just, it was just the tonic phase. So it was very interesting. I've never seen uh, a seizure like that where it was just the tonic phase. I've, I've, I've seen generalized tonic clonic seizures, but none like this. And her brain was not good in the first place. So it was interesting to see what the actual seizure looked like. Yeah, this was just my short little recap. My friend Morgan taught me a lot today. So thanks, Morgan. I appreciate it. I've been learning a lot, guys. See, if you're new to EEG, you can learn a lot from your coworkers, especially if they've been doing it for longer than you are. So if you have anyone in the uh, long-term epilepsy monitoring unit, ask them questions. If they capture a seizure, ask, hey, can you show me that seizure? Can you show me what happened on the EEG? And people are more than willing to help you. People are usually friendly in the workplace. If they're not friendly in the workplace, you're probably working at the wrong place. But but yeah, that was pretty much it. I wanted to recap it here on video for you guys since I found an interesting patient with Rett syndrome and we captured a tonic seizure. Very interesting. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you hit the like button if you want more EEG videos, more stuff about seizures, epilepsy, all that. I'm your guy, Jared Beckwith. Make sure you subscribe uh on youtube make sure you connect with me on linkedin i love to talk to you guys leave down in the comments below what do you guys want to see next i love you all and i'll see you guys on the next video